Uh, my name is Karl Martin. I'm a observability platform team lead in PyDrive, and uh, this is my first time doing a presentation for a crowd this uh, peak, so please go easy on me. <laughs> so a little bit about me. Uh, I am from Estonia, and this is a picture of an Estonian uh, flag colors taken from uh, Estonian landscape, so uh, quite clever. And uh, on my free time, I like to go racing. And this is a picture of me in my uh, race car at a drag racing event. So yeah. First, to set the stage, a little bit about uh, PyDrive. So uh, PyDrive is a CRM designed to help small businesses grow. Uh, for over 10 years, uh, we've been committed to building the best CRM a CRM by and for uh, salespeople. The result is an easy to use, effective sales tool that centralizes your data, helping you visualize your entire sales process and uh, win more deals. A little bit about our infrastructure. Uh, we have eight live product regions uh, running in private cloud and AWS. We have about 4,400 virtual machines uh, running 750 microservices and uh, our containerization platform of choice is uh, Kubernetes, which hosts about uh, 26,000 Kubernetes pods. About some of the technologies we use, uh, we use MySQL, uh, Kafka, CouchDB, Elasticsearch, which are the bigger ones, and uh, of course, uh, many smaller ones. So now uh, I will go back a few years and talk about or show uh, how our observability stack uh, looked back in uh, 2021 before we uh, implemented uh, LGTM and OpenTelemetry. So uh, on-site Grafana has been in Pytre for six plus years uh, together with Prometheus and uh, it has always been the standard to visualizing metrics uh, exported by our microservices. Uh, we had gray logs in all of our uh, product regions uh, and uh, SABIX for hardware and operating level monitoring, which back in the day we also used for uh, microservice monitoring. So we did those uh, wave checks back there, but that didn't scale. Uh, then we have always had a, a SaaS APM vendor, which we have switched uh, back and forth uh, between over the years, which of course I'm not going to name, but we have been to most of them, most of the biggest ones. ones. Now a diagram, uh, how it looked like. So uh, starting from the top, we had the Grafana and aggregation Prometheus running in our management region. Uh, uh, down at the bottom, we have uh, product regions where we had Greylock stacks, uh, Prometheus federators. And uh, five years ago, PyTribe was a single uh, region product. So our app was running in only uh, one data center on one location and over the years it started growing and now it's at eight. So eight of these uh, boxes down there. And with PyDrive growing, uh, this uh, observability approach really didn't scale and we started uh, running into single uh, instance limits for Prometheus and uh, it was really, to be honest, a pain to build a Greylock stack in every product region and then to add those uh, Grafana data sources and reconfigure alerts and so on. Uh, some of the other challenges that we had, so uh, logs, metrics and APM data was uh, spread out between different platforms. Uh, we were dependent on third parties making pricing policy changes, uh, uh, which made it difficult or even impossible to forecast our observability budget. Uh, there really was no single UI. Uh, all of the platforms used different query languages and they had different visualization capabilities. Uh, it was really difficult for anyone to do any kinds of investigations. So you first needed to know where and what to look for, and in even some cases, uh, in which region you had to look to. Uh, there was no connection to internal platforms like our CI/CD pipelines and uh, back office where we hold our client data. And uh, of course, the entire stack was falling behind on scaling capabilities compared to how fast PyDrive was growing. So we definitely had the need of uh, better performing and better scaling observability platforms. And now uh, on to how the LGTM helped us out with this. The components we chose, uh, so Mimir to replace our aggregation Prometheus in the management region. Uh, it's a highly scalable metrics backend and we are not even close to any of the limits that uh, Mimir can handle. 
Uh, we deployed Loki to manage uh, or to aggregate all of our logs from all the Python regions. So uh, with Loki, users don't need to log into every region's UI uh, and they don't need to switch between, between data sources. So uh, with this, we will have less alerts missed and uh, less uh, problems when uh, new PyDrive regions uh, pop up. Uh, we deployed Tempo for storing the final traces uh, and for the entire APM or distributed tracing platform, we had the goal from the beginning to provide a similar or better functionality what we had with third party platforms. And finally, uh, we used open telemetry collectors and uh, developed our own uh, wrappers for upstream auto libraries, which provide the necessary configuration and initialization steps for automatic instrumentation, similarly how the third party uh, uh, vendors did it. So the use cases we have for distributed tracing, so it's not just uh, some industry passwords, we actually do need it to make PyTry better. So we need to understand where, uh, why and uh, to who PyTrive app is not performing as expected. Uh, we need it for, to solve production incidents and uh, also uh, it provides us with unified metrics uh, which, will have, which will set the basis for SRE to have standardized alerting for all of our services. Uh, and really deploying on-site Loki and Tempo uh, laid the groundwork for having it all uh, on-site in, inside of our data centers. Why we chose OpenTelemetry and LGTM? So uh, OpenTelemetry is widely supported and invested into by CNCF. And uh, as the name states, it's open. So uh, we can keep the instrumentations in place while changing UIs and uh, backend platforms. Uh, using Grafana OSS, we could build our own UI and uh, really tell our own story. Uh, we didn't want to be locked into some uncustomizable and generic UI. And of course, uh, we could link to our internal data sources for additional context uh, for our dashboards. And uh, maybe really important also, uh, we could predict costs and uh, really pay for what we used. So for CPU, memory, networking and uh, storage. Uh, about the timeline, so uh, we kicked it off uh, in uh, January 2022 uh, with a team of uh, four engineers, including myself and uh, two, two uh, developers. Uh, so in January, we deployed Mimir uh, and one month after that, Tempo and Loki uh, while integrating Mimir as our uh, metrics backend. In March, uh, first traces or first trace for like a demo app was received in uh, Tempo and Loki. Uh, in June, three months after that, uh, initial open telemetry pipeline, pipeline was deployed to one of our uh, regions, so we could actually get the telemetry data from uh, some test services uh, in PyDrive. Then four months after that, already 10 live services were using uh, open telemetry, uh, but this was more like to generate some load to understand uh, uh, how our uh, pipeline survived the pressure. And uh, during that time, I think we overhauled it or changed it up like three or four times at least completely and uh, like started from zero because what worked for like one service or 10 service didn't work for 20 service. Five months after that, we had uh, 125 uh, live services using open telemetry. Uh, and uh, after that, two months later, we about 200 where we are already had created UIs and we had actual use cases from live environments where developers were using our uh, UIs. So uh, to enable OTEL for a Pytra service, so uh, all the previous APM platforms had libraries that were quite easy to implement. So we wanted to keep the same simplicity by creating OTEL wrappers for uh, Pytra services. Uh, these are the three steps you need to take to keep your service uh, or to get your service instrumented. Uh, and everything else is automatically populated in the backend with some uh, Grafana, Mimir and uh, Tempo uh, magic. Architecture. Uh, so how does our pipeline uh, look like? So at the top, we have a PipeTry microservice uh, uh, instrumented uh, with our wrapper. 
which uh, generates some uh, OTL data and it's received by OTL collector. Uh, so it's this open telemetry collector contribution or contrib, I don't know what's the exact name. And it's running in uh, daemon set in Kubernetes. So to the left, uh, we have a dedicated Prometheus instance, which, is, uh, which will receive the raw metrics generated by OTL collectors. And uh, in there, we are running recording rules and uh, sending the final uh, recorded metrics to Mimir. I'm going to talk about uh, recording, the metrics recording part in detail uh, in the upcoming slides. In the middle, uh, the final and filtered and enriched traces get sent to Tempo. And on the right right-hand side, we have a small workaround to generate uh, logs from spans. So we also have Grafana agent uh, running side by side with Total Collector, which uh, generates logs from uh, spans and they get sent to Loki uh, for searching and uh, other purposes. Some of the challenges we faced during the implementation. Uh, so when we set off, I would not have thought that uh, metrics would be the uh, most problematic for us. So label and metric cardinality, which directly links to query performance. So we really needed to understand the meaning of those uh, log labels and metrics that are being uh, generated to actually have some value out from there. Then optimizing query performance for end users. So visualizing seven days of uh, OTL data really should not take like a minute or two to run. So no one has time to wait for that. Uh, then applying the knowledge that we have learned to real use cases, uh, where, for example, a PyTrail service is slow, then which metrics logs or how should I visualize it and uh, so on. Uh, for our users, uh, learning another query language and figuring out the UI and uh, for observability team understanding, as I mentioned, understanding the actual business cases and implementing uh, them in our stack. So by adding or removing labels or summarizing and uh, so on, or even optimizing queries. So the recording or the metrics recording, why are we doing it? So. Uh, as I mentioned, metrics was one of the most complicated problems for us to solve. So having too much and uh, not having enough of them. So we decided to spend the computation resources uh, turning the metrics ingestion by running recording rules, uh, and uh, which enables us to cherry pick the metrics that we actually want to see. And uh, we were able to also keep the labels that we know that we need for the dashboards that we have created. So running histogram quantiles functions is uh, really a painfully heavy and res painfully resource heavy process. So uh, we really didn't want to leave all the uh, Loki and, Met and uh, Mimir uh, ports just idling and waiting for those uh, queries to run. So this was like a super critical step in making the UI usable uh, while loading 10 plus panels on a single Grafana dashboard. Uh, so our users don't wait, have to wait for those uh, small uh, spinning wheels to load all the data. With Mimir and Loki, of course, uh, they could be uh, scaled up uh, by, you know, throwing more money at it. And by money, I mean resources, but we didn't think it was like really reasonable to leave this everything idling and uh, waiting for those queries to run. So by using reco recording rules, uh, we could reduce our initial uh, metrics data set by 97%. So from 1 million active time series, only 30, 30k consumable metrics uh, were left. And we actually know that we are using them. Uh, label cardinality, so understanding log, log and uh, metric labels, and it really all became down to balancing resources and observing query times and, of course, our user feedback. So we needed to decide where we use metrics and where we use logs for querying. So uh, the lowest level that we have decided to create metrics is one single HTTP transaction throughput and uh, transaction latency. So if we need anything more detailed than that, we should already turn to logs for uh, more complex querying. And now we have all this data, we are gathering it, uh, we know the cardinality, uh, how, can it, how can we make it useful for our developers? For that, we decided to create a bunch of dashboards. I think it's around 10 uh, to really visualize this data. So starting from the top, we have a dashboard called PyTrev Overview, where, for example, uh, we can uh, 
monitor the performance of entire pipe drive app in one product region. Moving down from there, we have stack and infrastructure overviews uh, where we can monitor the performance of, for example, one stack. So by one stack, I mean like a combination of services, for example, how search function in PyDrive is functioning and uh, how automation is doing and so on. Uh, moving down, uh, we have service and database overview uh, where, we where we are still using metrics. And after that, we have already HTTP and async transaction breakdowns where we are already starting to combine logs and metrics in the queries. So if you want to see like high level throughputs, we are still uh, asking Mimir for metrics. But if, for example, we want to see already maybe uh, per uh, like authentication method metrics or uh, graphs, then we need to turn into logs. And finally, uh, down at the bottom layer, we already have like a single user or company performance in PipeDrive, where most of the data comes from uh, Loki logs and uh, from uh, span logs. And these dashboards we call company profile. Uh, all of the dashboards that we have created have uh, unified va variables, uh, look and feel. So. Uh, with, this, with these dashboards, uh, this enables us to really extend the context uh, to data sources which are not related to OTAL at all. So, for example, back office where we hold our client data, uh, Zabbix uh, where we still do some operating, level monit operating system level monitoring and uh, other internal tools. And if things take a uh, if uh, it really turns for the worst, then we also have deployment uh, annotations to see uh, what and uh, when was deployed. This is a second example of a company database overview. So it's a, again a really good example where we combine at least four or five different data sources uh, on uh, one single dashboard. So here we have uh, some metrics from our back office. Uh, we have data from Zabbix. Uh, also from uh, Loki logs and uh, some from uh, uh, Prometheus metrics. So really, uh, really, this dashboard is a really good starting point for any uh, support engineer starting the investigations. So if we have a customer complaint, they can open up this dashboard and uh, like get only add this company ID and get all the like basic information they need and verify all the uh, high level metrics from this company. So when we kicked off our project, we were still running Grafana version 8 uh, in our production environment. So uh, we really needed a way to improve the user experience. So what we decided to do is to build our own uh, small uh, plugin that, uh, uh, that creates a sm uh, basically an easily accessible and always visible green button on the right hand side uh, of every OTAL dashboard. And uh, with this, uh, it pops up a menu uh, with all the listed dashboards. So if you click on, for example, if you start on PyDrive overview, you can click on the next, uh, set, let's say, stack overview and all the labels uh, which you have selected and all the variables will be kept and you can, uh, uh, you can uh, navigate on to the next one. So it really helped uh, us to improve the user experience with those uh, OTAL dashboards. Uh, by now, we have already upgraded to version 9 of Grafana and we are looking into replacing this custom navigation with Grafana scenes function. Some of the numbers uh, from our LG LGTM stack. So we have uh, everything running on about uh, 1000 containers consuming uh, 360 CPUs, uh, about 1.3 terabytes of memory and uh, 2 billion uh, logs per day. Uh, we have about 27 million active time series. So this is combined together with open telemetry and with our entire uh, monitoring stack. So all the metrics that our services also expose and we are consuming about 300 and terabytes of uh, storage. So we are actually nowhere near of what some other presenters have presented. So like tens of thousands of terabytes. Uh, yeah, uh, and we also noticed that once we implemented open telemetry, we, we had some services uh, producing traces which contain about, uh, uh, let's say, 30 to 40,000 uh, sub spans. So uh, our maximum trace size is, is uh, 64 megabytes, and sometimes we still hit the limits uh, of, our, of the like maximum trace size. 
Uh, future plans. Uh, in the future, we are planning to have all PyTra services uh, instrumented with open telemetry. Uh, we are always looking into how to improve efficiency, so uh, to reduce the uh, resources the entire stack consumes. Uh, as I mentioned already, move to Grafana scenes where possible. Then have standardized aler alerting for all the OTL metrics that we have are right now generating. And of course, uh, improve performance for the users. So making the UI better and where possible as uh, tempo is getting better and better each day, then implement TraceQL to replace uh, LogQL on where we can. Conclusions. Uh, so did we actually achieve uh, what was planned? And I'm really glad to say that yes, uh, we did. And we have like really well working platforms at Loki, Tempo, Mimir and Grafana. And I hope uh, that this presentation is an encouragement to anyone who is uh, planning to head down a similar path. And uh, it really is uh, all possible to do with open source and uh, of course, a great team. Thank you.